Hello everybody. Today we are going to see a video of symptomatic Meckel's diverticulum treated with laparoscopic ileal resection. Meckel's diverticulum is caused by incomplete obliteration of the omphalomesentric duct which connects the yolk sac to the gut in the developing embryo. Generally rule of 2 has been used to describe this condition. It is seen in 2% of infant. It's the most common congenital normally. Generally 2% of the affected population are symptomatic. It is most commonly present 2 feet proximal to the ileocecal valve and it is commonly 2 inches long. It can be lined by 2 mucosas, pancreatic and gastric, ectopic mucosas. It generally occurs below 2 years of age and it is 2 times more common in males. It can present with several complications. The most common is painless rectal bleeding from ectopic gastric mucosa. Small ball obstruction can occur because of fibrous band, volvulus or incarceration. Sometimes it can act as a lead point for interception. Inflammation of diverticula can lead to diverticulitis and perforation. It can herniate as a litter's hernia and rarely you can have a neoplasm. The most sensitive test to diagnose Meckel's diverticulum is radionuclide scan which is done by injecting technetium 99M which is absorbed by gastric mucosa allowing the visualization of the diverticulum. We can do CT scan in these patients. If there is a bleeding which is more than 0.5 ml per minute, mesenteric angiography can be done and if there is a diagnostic dilemma, we can do diagnostic laparoscopy. This was an 18 year old male with recurrent abdominal pain. CT abdomen showed Meckel's diverticulum, a diagnostic laparoscopy was planned and we thought that we will do a laparoscopic ileal resection in this patient. So we will start with exploratory or diagnostic laparoscopy. So as we go in, we put the working ports and camera port and then first thing we do is we localize the ileocecal junction and from ileocecal junction, we start a bowel walk using intestinal or atraumatic clamp and we retrograde or in the reverse direction we start walking towards the ileum. So in the middle ileum or distal ileum approximately 2 feet pro proximal to the ileocecal junction we could find this diverticulum. This is a Meckel's diverticulum. You can see it is a wide base diverticulum and interestingly you can see the diverticulum is acting as a lead point for interception and that is why this was causing recurrent interception and pain in this child. So recurrent interception was the main presenting symptom leading to pain and now uh, since it was wide based with interception we plan to do an ileal resection and a segment of ileum containing diverticulum was planned to be resected. So first of all we will create a window from the resection point distal and proximal and then using a bipolar energy device that is Liga sure we will we are dividing the mesentery of the ileum and we will bear the ileum from one point to the point distal to the diverticulum and dividing the vascularity and mesentery completely making sure that we achieve absolute hemostasis and there is no bleeding and once we have done the complete mobilization then we will resect the whole segment. Now since the division of mesentery has completed, we will be dividing the ileum on the both the side and we are using endoscopic linear cutter stapler in which here we are using white cartridge which has an open height of 2.5 mm and closed height of 1 mm and it is throwing a 3 row of staples. So after firing the staple on the both end of ileum, we dissect and separate the specimen dividing a small bit of anti mesenteric border by a scissor. And once we have done that, now we will anastomose these two segments intracorporeally by side to side. So first of all, we will do a, we will take a stay suture on the anti mesenteric border of the divided end and then we will take another stay sutures in the proximal part of both the segment so that we can align the two limbs of the resected bowel together in a well oriented May manner so that we can fire another linear cutter endoscopic stapler to anastomose ileo ileal segment 
my side to side technique so we are taking by making sure that we are taking the corresponding part of jejunum equally on both side so after doing the stapling so now we will make an entrotomy we will increase the size of entrotomy on the both the limbs of the ilium so that we can insert the linear cutter so now we will be inserting by adequately lubricating with jelly and by traction and counter traction and help of atraumatic forceps we will insert the linear cutter and once we have inserted before locking we will make sure that we are holding the anti mesentric part and we are not going too close to the mesentery so we will observe and invert and see inside and out and once we have fired we have to make sure that there is absolute hemostasis now there is an entrotomy through which the stapler has gone in so we have to close this so we will be closing this by first layer 2 o pds continuous suture here we are using a self fixating self locking barbed suture also called as v lock so once we complete the closure of this v lock uh, continuous suture and the entrotomy is completely closed to reinforce this repair we will be using few interrupted 3 o silk lamberts or seromuscular stitches after that we will take a stitch in the distal part of the anastomosis also so that we support the staple line and finally we will close the mesentery and then we will check for any air leak and then the specimen will be inserted into an endocatch bag and extracted through the 12 m port which was used for firing the stapler and then we'll irrigate the cavity and finally put a drain we use a flat drain which can be inserted close to the anastomosis and then we will desufflate and close the port and we'll doing we'll be closing the 12 mm and 10 mm port by port closure needle so that we do not get a port side hernia in future and that will complete this surgery